Well, uh, Mayor and Board, if y'all are ready to get started uh, with the workshop, we can go ahead. I can tell you that I talked to Alderman Meyer just a few minutes ago, and he uh, unfortunately he's got to go. His daughter got injured at a uh, volleyball um, game or practice or something, so they're having to go and and take her in to get checked out. So um, just wish her hopefully uh, healing here soon, but he will not be here tonight. So I know this first item on your workshop was dealing with short-term rental units. Uh, it's an issue actually that had to come to Alderman Meyer. He had got a, a request from someone in town that had been uh, utilizing the short-term rentals, um, had his own, I guess, uh, Airbnb running out of his house. So to just give you a little background, I know Trevor uh, has more information uh, that he could give you as well if he's on, but um, we, and we had some information in your packet, but the town, the board elected last year to basically prohibit short-term rentals in the future, but we allowed and agreed to allow um, grandfather uh, of those rentals for anyone that was active. And we tried to figure out what's the best way to determine if they are an active Airbnb and, and, and have the right uh, authority uh, to be grandfathered in. And so we elected to um, require that they have a, a business license through the town. We had no one with an active business license through the town that had a short-term rental. So effectively, we had no grandfathered uh, uses for those. And so what would now be is that anybody that has an Airbnb, it would be uh, against the town's regulations to have that uh, in the town of Farragut moving forward. So Scott had wanted to uh, bring up to the board, do we need to relook at those policies do we need to try to figure out and determine maybe a different way of um, requiring a proof that you had an Airbnb prior to the June of 27th of 2019 when the ordinance went into effect, um, maybe through tax returns or business tax returns or something like that. And so that's really the discussion tonight. If you'd like to discuss it and give some feedback, uh, staff can, can bring something back to you in the future. Uh, if you'd like to wait for Alderman Meyer to come back, um, you know, probably at the next meeting, we can do that as well. Um, so it's really just up to the board how you want to proceed or give your thoughts on this issue. Um, can I, I think I'd ra really rather hear from um, Alderman Meyer before we start this, making this discussion. I know that he's got points he needs to make and <clears throat> it would be, I, I just think I'd rather hear from him before we make a decision on this, but that's my opinion. And just push this off to the next meeting so that uh, he can attend and and more speak more to the, the points he'd like to make. Uh, Mayor Williams, uh, am I coming through or is this still dead? I can hear you. We hear you. Okay. Uh, I think we made it pretty clear about the uh, having a business license because uh, to operate a business, you should have a business license. And uh, it's been quite some time since we've looked at this, and, and now he's just now coming about to ask about it. I think we were uh, what a year a year into it, but uh, uh, so I don't really see what else we could do uh, to help one person that has had a year to, to really, uh, well, he had plenty of time prior to that if he was operating a, a B, or Airbnb before that. If he's just started operating one, then um, I think he needs to probably read our, our uh, uh, ordinance about it. So, but if you, if everyone else wants to wait for uh, Scott, then I have no problem with that. I don't think it's anything that's really pressing. As all I'm fine either way, either discussing it and voting on it tonight or waiting. It's uh, one person. And again, they did not have a permit. I'm not sure what, uh, what, um, Alderman Meyer can bring forward that would change our minds, but uh, either way, I'm fine. This is Alderman Burnett. I'm kind of in the same same boat. Um, I 
I thought it was pretty clear, but if there's some additional points that need to be brought up, I, I'm fine with waiting. I will just make a, one other point is that although there was one person that uh, contacted Alderman Meyer, there's actually four in town that we have contacted to let them know that uh, their their use of Airbnbs is prohibited in town. So more than just one, uh, and we and I don't know much more details other than that is that we've been notifying folks that um, that we know are are utilizing Airbnb and letting them know that they should not be doing that. So um, so if the board's okay, I'm happy to. Uh, Obviously, we can postpone this uh, item for, for Alderman Meyer to get back, uh, hopefully, at our next meeting, and then we can bring it up and, and have him uh, maybe discuss some of the points he had on how you may be able to find some records, uh, or if a person really had a legitimate business with this, there's many records they would have to have on file, um, and if they didn't and didn't have those available, then uh, possibly that's something that we could uh, – yeah, obviously, it wouldn't be a, a legal use at that point. So, anyway, we can uh, we can move on then uh, to the next item on the agenda, which was a, a discussion of our current traffic calming policy. Uh, Vice Mayor Pavlin had uh, come to me a few weeks ago and talked about the desire to want to amend the current policy. So, I'm going to let her do a, a lot of the uh, discussion on what she has in mind for for the policy. But you did have a copy of the policy in your packet. Uh, to review, uh, we've had the traffic common policy in place for several years. Uh, it, we utilize this obviously at, mostly in local residential streets, neighborhoods, subdivisions, places like that. We expanded the option uh, in 2018 to allow for areas such as Sonia Drive and, and some of the areas in I think Kingsgate subdivision to be able to request um, traffic calming in those areas that they weren't allowed to previously. Uh, the traffic calming is really for speeding when people are and when neighborhoods have a speeding problem then we allow them to go forward we have a process that we go through it's very detailed in the uh, in the policy uh, it takes voting uh, first it takes us our staff goes out and does a study to see the uh, the traffic volumes and the traffic counts and, and the speeding that is going on out there uh, if it reaches certain levels then obviously uh, we would recommend that the neighborhood uh, go forward and they have a vote uh, and if the neighborhood reaches a certain threshold of votes, then it could move forward with traffic calming measures. Uh, we have utilized those a couple different times in town, one in Country uh, Manor subdivision and another one in Thornton Heights. So, um, and those are usually in the form of speed bumps since we've certainly used other things like uh, digital speed signs, trying to get people's attention about speed as well. So with that, I'll turn things over to Vice Mayor Pavlin and let her discuss with you some of her thoughts and ideas on the traffic calming policy and let y'all have a discussion on it. All right. Thank you, David. Um, we, this, this policy, we amended this policy a few years back to include collectors, neighborhood collectors that were more than 50% of the frontage was uh, residential. And that opened up Sonia Drive and Admiral Road, which are in the Farragut View neighborhood. And once that opened up, they applied and they definitely had speeding issues throughout uh, both Sonia Road, Sonia Drive and Admiral Road. Um, they went through the process. They asked for, I think it was a total of nine speed cushions and uh, it was voted down. One of the issues was that there's the affected area, which is the people that aren't directly dealing with the speeding, but may be affected because they drive through that area. And the area of concern, which was Sonia, in this case, it was Sonia Drive and Admiral Road. And the residents on in Farragut View, these two roads that are, that where they're seeing a, a high level of speeding, were, were upset that the people that were actually doing this, probably doing the speeding, the people in Stonecrest, could vote down the speed cushions and and then continue to speed and they would have to deal with it. So when I went through the policy, um, I tried to, um, and I we don't see the amended one here, I sorted out and defined the affected area, defined the area of concern and included both of those as the impact area. If you read through the policy, when they do voting, 
Um, the biggest issue would be when they do voting, the affected area would only have to be meet the 50% threshold and the area, area of concern, the area where speeding is actually happening would have to meet the 65% threshold. So that's basically what I was proposing was we clean it up, make sure that our, we have definite, uh, real definitions for what is the affected area and what is the area of concern and then um, when we vote, because that's what we did, we actually ended up delineating out for the vote um, for Farragut view. Uh, in actuality, in Stonecrest, if it was at 50%, they would have made that number. Um, Stonecrest came in at 54%. Um, Admiral view, uh, Farragut view came in at like 63%. So uh, with these changes, these number changes, um, there's an opportunity. A lot of people, when we got feedback, a lot of them said they voted against it because they were asking for too many speed cushions. So I know that uh, at, uh, Farragut View will come back again after their two years up and reapply. And I would like to address to me what seems to be very unfair that the people that are actually speeding are the ones that get to vote down this policy, get to vote down these speed cushions. Um, don't know how the rest of you feel about that. Uh, Mayor Williams, I agree with that. I think that's uh, I've, uh, during the period of time when I contacted a lot of the uh, folks that were uh, that had damage from the uh, Mass Tech group uh, when they were installing the uh, fiber. Uh, I talked to them about that as well, and uh, that was something that uh, uh, they all were concerned about and I think they all realize that uh, they probably did ask for too many too many speed cushions so I, I have to agree with the vice mayor vice mayor this is Alderman Burnett I, I agree 100 percent what you outlined just doesn't make sense it's like competing interests so I, I'm very much in favor of what you outlined this is Alderman Pinchuk I feel exactly the same way Well, that was easy. <laughs> that is like hitting the easy button and uh, just going ahead and moving on. So we'll, we will uh, work on the language. I know uh, Vice Mayor Pavlin had already given us uh, many of those points. We can, we can get that put into the policy and put that on your next agenda for the board to consider. Um, the, the final workshop item that I have, at least tonight, is to discuss with you some of the uh, uh, public meeting protocol for the Board of Mayor and Alderman meetings. Uh, I was able to send that out to you, uh, I think, earlier today or late yesterday. Just wanted to touch base on a couple of possible modifications to the, um, to the policy. Let me bring up the exact changes. Trying to go digital complete digital rather than paper, so I apologize I'm working slowly here. Um, uh, first, the first uh, couple changes in the first paragraph, we talk about uh, the Board of Mayor and Alderman welcomes and invites uh, citizens to participate. Uh, there's some desire to modify that to talk about Farragut residents to participate in those meetings. So you would be limiting that to Farragut residents uh, that would be able to call in and, and make comment or come in and make comment, which also goes down to the body of the guidelines. There's several guidelines uh, in here. Um, and number two would also include any Farragut resident interest, interested in speaking would fill out a comment card or in today's, what we've been dealing with, with during the COVID era is, uh, you know, obviously sending this in an email uh, to the comments uh, website or to the email address and then having their name and address posted for that. Also in, uh, in line four, um, we do talk about public comments shall be limited to five minutes per, and right now per individual. Uh, and I think the, it's always been the case, but we wanted to make it sure it was understood is that the mayor in, in this case, or possibly even the planning commission chairman in, in that case, uh, has discretion to change those and modify those rules as needed based on the content of the meeting. You may have a meeting that has many, many, many people that are interested in speaking. Uh, you may wanna have a certain time frame that you allow maybe both sides to speak on it to, to move the meeting along. So, so that gives, the, the, again, the mayor 
it's already been implied, but this is more in the, in the wording of the uh, protocol, allows him uh, or the mayor's position uh, discretion on amending those rules as needed. Um, and then finally, uh, is just getting it clarified in, in point five that, uh, you know, trying to avoid redundancy and make sure that each person has their own original viewpoint uh, when speaking. So those are the changes that uh, are proposed for the agenda. We're happy to answer any questions about that. If the board is comfortable with those changes or any other modifications you'd like to make, uh, we'd like to be able to add that on to the last business item under, under tonight's agenda uh, if you're interested in that. So with that, I'll be quiet and answer any questions. This is Armin Pinchock. I, I'm in favor of the changes and have no issues. Mayor Williams, I agree with Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Burnett, I agree with Alderman Pinchock. I'm fine with it. Is this going to apply? I mean, consistently, the only thing you'll change is um that's the bma public uh speaking and you'll change where it says mayor you'll say planning commission chair chairman or the planning commission protocol is that the only change that would be different between them uh yes ma'am that would be the major change and the planning commission will have to get that to the planning commission at their next meeting to to discuss that and we'll we'll put that on the agenda okay okay that's all i have Okay, well, that's maybe the shortest workshop that I had an hour of time for, and it only took us 19 minutes. So if there's any other items that the board uh, would like to, to, to touch base on or discuss, we've got a few minutes of time before the meeting starts. I'd just like to uh, uh, um, update the board. I am working on a very thorough background um, document for this uh, mixed use town center plan um, to give to the residents so they understand uh, and it goes right back to private property rights and planning and our land use plan and how it came about and how we use it and then um, discuss a little bit of what this plan is. Um, my goal is that it's it's uh, all encompassing so that when people are asking questions, we can, I, we, I can, well, at least from my position, if someone sends me an email, I can just send this out. But it's something I plan on sharing once I finally work through it all with the rest of the board so that you guys can kind of see where it's going and see if you're getting um, questions, this might be a document that you want to send out to your, the residents that you're, you're talking to. Uh, Mayor Williams, I think that's a good idea. We we seem to have a, uh, a quite a bit of uh, misconception about uh, about that subject. That uh, uh, some folks hear a little snippet or read a little bit of snippet on the uh, on social media, and uh, they are not getting the full story. They hear one particular item uh, as a bullet point, and uh, it takes off and and uh, with a uh, a negative, which it probably shouldn't be because if folks really knew what all uh, this uh, encompasses, I think they would uh, probably look at it with uh, different eyes. Uh, so I think that's probably a real good idea, in my opinion. That's all I had. All right, well then we uh, we have uh, a few minutes until the beer board starts at 6.50. So if everyone wants to uh, take a break and come back right at 6.50, then we'll get started with the beer board then. I see the time is 6.50 um, and I see we have board members present, so we have a quorum. So it's time to call to order the get beer board for August 27, 2020. Um, first item of business is approval of minutes. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any, uh, any questions about it? If not, will we take a roll call? Roll call vote, Allison. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Meyer. Oh, you hit that one, sorry. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. 
Alderman Pavlin? Alderman Pavlin, yes. Mayor Williams? Mayor Williams, yes. All right, the next item of business is a beer request for an approval of a class one on-premise beer permit for Dodge Valley's located at 11639 Parkside Drive. Yes, sir, this is, all the information is in order and this is for the class one for the Agaves at um, 11639 Parkside, which is the old La Perea side as well. And everything is in order and the applicant is on the phone tonight. The applicant uh, would like to speak, please. Is the applicant present? They were on there a second ago. Well, let's have a motion. I'm going to move to approve a class one on premise bill permit for Dose Agaves 16339 Parkside Drive. We have an Are y'all getting a lot of feedback? I'm getting a lot on my. It's, uh, it's, I think it's Ron, and I'm not sure why. Ron, is your have you muted your mic? It's it's Ron's. Um, yeah, yeah. You're talking and we can't hear you now. I apologize. You have a crackling coming through your yeah. um, phone uh, when you're talking. You have something crackling. When I'm talking now, it's crackling. Yes. I'm not sure what would be called that. Any suggestions, Allison? No. So is the applicant on the phone? Do they hear us? She was just because she and I talked on here just before everybody started joining up. So I'm not sure where they we are. Have, we have a call in user number four. I'm not sure who that is. I don't know. All right. Do we know, um, Allison, if they've gotten all of their training? Um, she was talking to me about that today. They're working on training and they're not sure about their opening date yet. They thought it was going to be at the end of this month, but it's gotten pushed to probably the end of next month. Okay. So do we want to postpone to until do we want to postpone until next month if she's not present? Bob? Oh, I would hate to put them on hold to open because um, if everything's in order, um, I, I think there's a way we could have a conversation with them. Allison could have a conversation with them to make sure mm -hmm. that they've gotten their training and that we get them the the um, folder that we always give to them. Yes, they'll they'll get that when they pick up their permit. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable with getting your CO is so important and getting getting open is so important. I would hate to hold them up if they're ready before that, um, if everything's in order. Is this the one that's moving? Is this particular location moving from one location to another location? No, sir. This is a new restaurant going into the old La Perea space over on Parkside Drive. Okay, I understand that, but it's brand new. It's not the proprietors of another one in town. No, sir, it's brand new. Oh. I feel a little uncomfortable approving this without them present, just to make sure they understand uh, what's expected of them. But if you all feel that Allison covered that, um, we proceed forward. Do we have the ability to give them a quick call to see if they're actually on and are having technical difficulties or? Well, she was actually on and she and I've had a conversation. Let me, um, let me see you if I can give her a call. On, you have her number on file? Calls. I do. Let me give her a call real quick. 
Hey, Ron, while we're, while we're waiting, maybe take your AirPods out and put them back in the case and close it and then open them back up and reconnect them and see if that solves it. This technology stuff is for the birds when it doesn't work. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay, is that any better? No, still sounds like popcorn's popping. Really? Oh, well, let me turn the pop up off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, try using your just try using not using the uh, your pods and see if it if your regular speaker works better. Okay, I just talked to Jessica and she's gonna call in real quick. She got booted off and she's having trouble getting back on. Okay, so my question is, I take the AirPods out and will it automatically go back to my computer? Got one Theoretically. <laughs> That's how technology is supposed to work. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me give it a try. Okay. Jessica, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay. Jessica um, is on the line now, so she can answer any questions you guys have. Ron, did you want to ask your questions? Can you hear me? Is that yes, better? I can hear you. That'll work, Ron. All right, this is Alderman Pinchock. I was having some uh, audio problems. Uh, would you like to speak uh, for your business and uh, what your plans are? Uh, yes, um, we are hoping to open um, around the middle of September. Um, it's going to be a full-service Mexican restaurant, of course, um, specializing in just Mexican food. We're going to have a patio. Um, we're hoping to get our beer license so we can serve, you know, draft beer and bottled beer with our meals. And uh, I don't know what all questions you all have. So, I guess the big question is, are you familiar with uh, the needs of uh, making sure that uh, – the uh, underage uh, people are not served any uh, alcohol and uh, that you need to go through a certain amount of training and we have a packet for you to help you along with that. Okay, yes, um, yeah, there will always be a manager on duty to make sure all of our servers will know, you know, no ID, no alcohol. Um, they'll be trained on how to, um, how to check IDs, make sure that everyone's of age before they sell. Um, and yeah, we'd, we'd like to do any training that you all would like for us to do. So um, we actually, um, some of the owners right now, we had a beer license with the Tequila Mexican restaurant. So some of our waiters have probably already been through the training. Um, our lease is running up at a Tequila on Kingston Pike. So um, we're moving over to Parkside Drive and we'll have a lot of the same waiters. So. Um, a lot of them have already had their training, but if we need to do additional training, we can do that. We have a packet for you, so uh, Allison will give you that packet when you come in to pick up your permit. But uh, for any new employees, uh, this packet may help uh, uh, make things a little easier for you to uh, make sure they get the proper training. So thank you. Okay, great. I any other questions any by the board? None. I don't have any. None. All right, Allison, roll call vote. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Alderman Pavlin. Alderman Pavlin, yes. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Okay, the motion passes for zero. Um, if there's any other business for the beer board to uh, speak up, otherwise, uh, we are going to be adjourned. Meeting over.
Thank you. Okay, the Thank time you. the time is approximately 7 p.m. and the August 27th, 2020 Farragut Board Mayor and Alderman Me will now come to order. Tonight we'll be operating on Governor Lee's Executive Order Number 16/34/51 slash slash due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Executive Order 16 concerning electronic means, which has been extended by Executive Order 34 through June 30th of 2020, which now has been extended by Executive Order 51, which will be enforced through August the 29th, 2020, which at time that particular one will expire in accordance with the executive order. Live access to the virtual meetings is made available through Charter 193 or TDS Channel 3. During this period of time, all citizens' agenda or forum comments and questions, along with a name and address, should be emailed to comments at townoffarragut.org and should have been received by 12 p.m. that day in order to be included in the record of the meeting. All Farragut Board and Alder, Mayor and Alderman meetings will be public notice per Tennessee state law, and they will also be recorded and can be viewed at a later date on the Town of Farragut YouTube channel. Pursuant to the governor's executive order, all votes taken tonight will be by roll call vote. And I will now ask the town recorder to please take attendance roll call for a quorum. Trying to get unmuted here. All right. Um, Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Alderman Meyer, he's out. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, president. Alderman Pavlin. Alderman Pavlin present. Mayor Williams. Mayor Wilson, Williams present. Uh, okay, do we have any from the press or the shopper or any other uh, media? Looks like Margie and Michelle both are on, um, yep, on the call tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the agenda, we uh, think we have an amended agenda item tonight. Uh, yes, Mayor, we would like to add under business items, uh, letter F, approval of amendment to Board of Mayor and Alderman public meeting protocol. Okay, with that change, I'll ask for a motion to approve the amended August 27, 2020 agenda as changed. Move to approve the amended agenda. Okay, now I'll ask the town recorder to please take a roll call vote. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Alderman Pavlin. Alderman Pavlin, yes. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Let the record show that the amended August 27th, 2020 agenda has been approved as stated. And next will be approval of minutes. And I'll ask for a motion to approve the August 13th, 2020 minutes as presented. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, I'll now ask the town recorder for a roll call vote, please. Alderman Pavlin. Sorry. Sorry. Alderman Pavlin, yes. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Let the record show that the August 13th, 2020 minutes have been approved and will be recorded as official minutes of the meeting. And next will be the mayor's report. Uh, again, I urge everyone to stay with physical distancing and face covering when around each other. Uh, as we've seen with most of the recent updates, except for maybe today's, uh, the number of deaths have increased as the number of cases. Still pretty alarming. It, Folks are, are still not taking this as serious as they should. And one more thing, um, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, uh, Margie uh, Hagan for her years of service with us as covering for the shopper and, uh, and hope she has a good time in her retirement. And uh, we really appreciate what she's done for us at Town of Ferry. Thank you very much, Mayor. Okay, and then 
Let's see here. Uh, let me move on then to uh, yield the floor to Vice Mayor Pavlin for her report. Well, you kind of stole my thunder there, Mayor Williams. I wanted to thank Margie as well. I, she's done a wonderful job with uh, reporting on our lovely town and she has pitched in and helped when needed and we really appreciate that when we need some residential re residents input. I also wanted to congratulate our schools on and our students and our teachers and our parents on surviving almost the almost finished the first week of school. So on, under very trying circumstances, the bus drivers, the kids are getting on their buses and getting there and I'm really I'm happy that everybody is staying safe and staying healthy. So let's hope it continues that way. That's all I had. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor Pavlin. Uh, any other item have anything to report? I want to pinch off, I have none. Nothing here. Okay, if not, then we'll move on to our full slate of agenda items tonight. Uh, we have four ordinances to review with public hearing tonight. First will be a public hearing on the second reading, ordinance 20-04, an ordinance to amend the Farragut Municipal Code, Chapter 109, signs by replacing it within its entirety, the town of Farragut is the applicant. Mayor, I'll uh, handle this one tonight since uh, Mark is, is out uh, this evening. Uh, this is second reading of the ordinance. We've been working on the sign uh, amendments for quite some time now, since uh, late last year in 2019. Uh, it's been through several iterations and uh, was approved on first reading of the board meeting last time. There had been no changes from first to second reading, so we would recommend approval of, on uh, second reading of Ordinance 20 04. I'll move for approval. Second. Okay. Uh, let's see, uh, ask the town recorder if we have any uh, citizens' comments or questions. No, sir, we do not. Do not? Okay, if none, then we'll move on to discussion. Start with Alderman uh, Pinchuk, since Alderman Meyer is out. Uh, I have nothing further to say. It's been a long process, and I'm so excited that this is coming to end. I got a piece of cake here to celebrate. Okay, Alderman Burnett. Uh, You're muted. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't have a piece of cake to celebrate, but I have nothing more to add. I'm glad this is coming to a close as well and appreciate all the hard work that went into it. And Vice Mayor Pablo. I, I have nothing uh, except thank you, Alderman Pinchock, for doing the heavy lift on this. I know that the sign ordinance can be a little bit thick to get through, but I think we ended up in a much better place and uh, your efforts are very much appreciated. <laughs> Uh, the mayor, I echo that. Uh, also, want to thank the rest of the group that participated. Uh, it was pretty much a tireless thing to to get through it all. And uh, I've sat through some of their meetings, and uh, they they both were all engaged and and really took it seriously and, and made uh, made our what I consider our sign ordinance a lot user friendly. So, uh, with the motion on the floor in a second, I'll ask the town recorder. For for roll call vote, please. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Alderman Poblin. Alderman Poblin, yes. Mayor William. Mayor William, yes. Let the record show that Ordinance 20 04 has been approved on the second reading. Okay, next will be Ordinance 20 11. It's an ordinance to amend the equipment fund for fiscal year. 2020 and 21, 2021 budget passed by ordinance 20-07. Yes, sir. This is the second reading of the um, budget amendment for the equipment fund. And this is increased due to a truck that we did not um, foresee that kind of died on us. So we had to get a new truck. Um, and so that amount that we need to amend the budget for is $14,760. The motion is to approve ordinance 2011 on second and final reading. Move okay. to approve. Okay, Louise. I'll second it. Okay. Any comments or questions? 
None. <laughs> okay. Discussion. Alderman Pinchot. I'll pass. Okay. Alderman Burnett. I'll pass. Okay. Vice Mayor Pavlin. I have none. None. Mayor has none as well. With the motion to second on the floor, I'll ask the town recorder for a roll call vote, please. Alderman Pinchot. <laughs> Alderman Pinchock. Sorry about that. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Alderman Pavlin. Alderman Pavlin, yes. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Uh, let the record show that the ordinance 20 11 has been approved on the second reading. The next two ordinances will be for public hearing on the first reading. And we'll start with Ordinance 20-09, an ordinance to amend Chapter 4, Alcoholic Beverages, Article 2, Beer, to amend the Class 4 Tavern Permit, and to create a Class 7 Brew per Pub Permit. Town of Farragut applicant. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Trevor Hobbs, Assistant to the Town Administrator. I'm going to present this one to you. Uh, Basically, this ordinance has two parts. Uh, the first um, is to amend the tavern permit, and the second create the Class 7 brew pub permit. Um, just by way of quick background, just so where everyone's on the same page, uh, this ordinance is based on uh, the text amendment applications of two separate businesses, the Admiral Pub and Admiral's Corner. Um, first, in terms of the taverns, um, the the amendment to the tavern permit um, basically amends the square footage limitation on taverns from 3,500 square feet to 4,500 square feet. And um, the ordinance also amends the existing language um, that requires food sales to specify that food sales, food and non-alcoholic beverage sales must account for at least 20% of all on-premise sales at taverns. And then in, uh, I guess, the second piece uh, dealing with the brew pubs, the ordinance um, adds definitions for brew, for brew pub and for microbrewery. And uh, the, just so you know, the definitions that were included in your original packet were, were based on um, the, the resolution that was going to the Planning Commission last week. But then the Planning Commission made some adjustments to those definitions, and so those uh, those changes uh, were not in your packet at the time. Uh, we have those on the uh, on the next slide, just so you can see there what we what we did. Um, I'm coming case, up early. Um, and, but in any case, that um, that reflects the, the changes we made. We basically just uh, simplified it a little bit, took out the, the definition of a microbrewery and just used the word microbrewery. Um, and then, of course, the, the definition of microbrewery remained unchanged. Then second, the ordinance creates the Class 7 brew pub permit. Um, it limits the number of brew permits. Brew permit, brew pub permits in the town to three, and creates um, a set of terms for that permit. Those um, similar to uh, similar to the definition, the, the the list of requirements in your packet have been modified, and so the two changes um, on first reading for this would be that um, brew pubs. Are we going to be required to be housed in a building space and or tenant space that does not exceed 7,500 mm -hmm. gross square feet? And on recommendation from our fire marshal, um, we're putting in a requirement to have a fire sprinkler system in accordance with um, NFPA 13. And um, just in, in terms of that, those last two changes there, um, by way of clarification, our uh, original draft ordinance was based on the the building plans we had for um, Admiral's Corner um, from back in fall of last year. And now that they've basically, you know, built the, the footprint of that building, 
it's actually a little closer to about 7,500 square feet. And so we're increasing that to match their actual footprint. And um, in terms of the recommendation for the fire sprinkler system, our fire marshal explained that um, in most cases, you know, we're going to have these these types of um, uses require a, a fire sprinkler permit anyway, uh, a fire sprinkler system anyway. Um, there would be a very rare occasions where, you know, a retrofit for a, an existing space perhaps might not require it. Um, but just in, in erring on the side of caution with this type of use, um, he recommended that we we go ahead and require it in all in all cases, and so that's um, and it, that's a consistent that's consistent with our tavern permit requirement to have our fire sprinkler system. So, in conclusion, you know the, these are basically the two pieces of this ordinance. Um, staff, you know, have received lots of uh, feedback from the from the board and from the planning commission. We're confident that uh, this ordinance reflects both the town's regulatory intent as well as the the uh, requests from the applicant so it's uh, therefore it's proposed that the board would approve ordinance 20-09 on first reading i'm happy to answer any questions you have this is alderman pinchot trevor uh, did you say that the applicant uh, for uh, animal corner uh, is aware of this fire sprinkler um, system um, stipulation and, and is there any problem with it he's aware and actually based on the square footage uh, it would be required anyway so he's he's planning on putting it in it's not going to be an issue at all thank you is the applicant on the phone do we know yes is carlos that carlos yes um, Carlos, do you, are you aware of this? Are you having? Do you have issues with this? Is this uh, aligning with what's going on already? Yes, ma'am. It's aligning with what's going on already, so you should be oh, fine. Wonderful. All right, I'm going to make a motion to approve. I'll, I'll second it. I didn't know if there was any more discussion, Mayor Williams. I'm sorry if I was premature on that. No, that's okay. Uh, uh, actually. Uh, he asked if there was any questions in prior to, and and we had some questions. So uh, you had your question. So if we have any other discussion, we'll we can go with it. If not, then I'll move on with a a uh, uh, and ask the town recorder if there is any uh, citizen comments. There are not. I'm sorry, I had a question. Just to all of you, I know that we allowed three taverns. Did we want to start out allowing three brew pubs or did we want to kind of pace ourselves? It's just a question. Uh, I'm fine either way, but um, because we already have three taverns and we have a brew pub coming in, did we want to um, space them out and maybe say one and then and see how we feel about another one coming in? Or how do you guys feel about that? Uh, I think that's an excellent idea. I'm going to uh, Alderman Pincha. Uh, I'm thinking. Um, I understand where she's coming from, uh, but I hope that we could get a second and third. I don't know that I'd want any more than three, but um, I guess I guess I'm okay either way. Okay, Alderman Burnett. Uh, I'm okay with having one, and then reviewing any other requests that come up i think we should do that uh reason being is uh this is a space that's being built for this uh i'm not sure that the next one that may apply will be a space that's built for it and uh i want to make sure that we are uh whatever is put forth on the next one if there is a next one then that uh, there won't be any misconception that just because or space for one that they should get it. That's my comment. I like those good points. I agree. Okay, so I'm going to amend this to include just uh, limit it to one um, brew pub located within the town. So that includes the other amendment of the 7,500 
the amendment, including the fire sprinkler and um, what other language that we had mended um, from what we have in our packets. That's my convoluted motion. Okay, Allison, you got that? I do. Okay. Then I guess we will need a roll call. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Alderman Poplin? Alderman Poplin, yes. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Okay. Uh, let the record show that the ordinance 20 09 has been approved on the first reading with a four to zero vote. And that would be amended ordinance 20 09. Okay, next will be an ordinance 20 16, an ordinance to amend the town of Farragut zoning ordinance to permit. Well, that's the same one for brew pubs. I'm sorry. No, no you're correct. Oh, right, well, right. We need two. Okay. It's the sister ordinance. Yes. Okay. Uh, and commercial zoning districts. All right. So I'll go ahead and pre present this one as well. Um, this ordinance is, is the companion ordinance to the one we just discussed. Um, in order to create this use in our zoning ordinance, uh, define it, and of course specify the zones where it will be permitted. Um, similar to the lap to ordinance 20-09, we did um, receive some modifications to the brew pub or, um, definition from the planning commission. And so that's reflected um, the same way here as we just uh, defined it in the beer ordinance. The, uh, the other component was is that we will um, add the brew pub use to, um, to our C1, our C1 mixed use town center, um, district overlay, our C2, our NCC, and our um, OD, RE, and E commercial districts in the town. And along with that, specify some minimum development requirements um, on those, on that use. The, uh, just the, the basic, you know, the reason we're defining it that way, just so everyone is understanding is that, um, you know, if we were to allow more in the future, it would be clear that you can't just have a microbrewery on its own, that, that the brew pub use is what is actually permitted. And therefore you have to, um, you have to combine it with a eating establishment type, uh, type concept. So of course we, um, uh, staff, are confident that this uh, reflects the the town's regulatory intent and um, the request from the applicant, and so it is proposed that the board would adopt Ordinance 20-16 on first reading. Move to approve Ordinance 20-16. Second. Okay. Uh, do we have any citizen comments, please? No, sir. Okay. Uh, if none, then we'll move on to discussion and we'll start with Alderman Pinchot. I'll pass. Okay, Alderman Burnett. I'll pass. That's Mayor Pablo. I'll pass. Mayor passes as well. And uh, with the motion a second on the floor and no discussion, I'll now ask the town recorder, please take a roll call vote. Alderman Pablin. Alderman Pablin, yes. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Uh, uh, let the record show that Ordinance 20 16 has been approved with a 4 0 vote on the first reading. And next, we'll move on to our business items. We, uh, we have six items on tonight's amended agenda. And uh, we'll start off with approval of Resolution R 2020 09. A resolution declaring certain town property to be surplus property. Yes, sir. This is this um, um, item is for any equipment that we have that's greater than a hundred dollars, and we will be advertising those on GovDeals.com, which is an online government surplus auction site. The items we are sur surplusing tonight is a 2005 Ford F-150 with plow, a 2009 Ford F-250 with a plow a 2006 case good steer loader, a 2015 John Deere 9970 turn mower. 
And the motion is to approve resolution R-2020-09, declaring certain town property to be surplus. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see. I'll ask the town recorder to read in any questions or comments from residents. We, don't, we do not have any tonight. None, okay. And we'll move on to discussion. We'll start out with uh, Alderman Pinchot. I pass. Pass. Okay, Alderman Meyer is out. Uh, Alderman Burnett. I'll pass. Vice Mayor Pablo. I'll pass. Okay, Mayor Williams. Looks like we've got enough for a used, uh, used equipment lot here. Um, we do. Uh, okay, with a motion uh, that has been seconded, I'll now ask the town recorder for a roll call vote, please. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Alderman Poblin. Alderman Poblin, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Okay. Let the record show that the resolution has been approved as requested. Okay, next will be approval of resolution R2020-10, Sourcewell Cooperative. Yes, sir. This agenda item is to confirm the participation in Sourcewell, which is a nationwide government purchasing alliance. Sourcewell was a, formerly known as the National Joint Powers Alliance, and it's a public um, entity whose creation was authorized by, the Minnesota, by Minnesota Statute 123A.21. And it also authorizes it to engage in cooperative purchasing. Tennessee municipalities may participate in this program. It's an interlocal cooperative, agreement, cooperative act in TCA 12-9-101. So all the contracts um, with Sourcewell are established through a comprehensive process of purchasing and solicitation of, of those contracts. And attached in your packet was the procurement policy. The town has participated in this program for several years and this resolution confirms that partnership because the company's name changed from National Joint Powers Alliance to Sourcewell. The motions to approve resolution R-2020-10, participation with Sourcewell Cooperative Purchasing. Move to approve. I'll second. Okay. Uh, we'll start with uh, Alderman Burnett on discussion. I'll pass. Pass. Okay, Vice Mayor Pablo. Pass. Alderman Pinchot. Alderman Pinchot, pass. Okay, the mayor passes as well. This is pretty pretty straightforward. Okay, with a motion a second, I'll now ask the town recorder for a roll call vote, please. Alderman Pinchot. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Alderman Pavlin? Alderman Pavlin, yes. Alderman Burnett? Alderman Burnett, yes. Mayor Williams? Mayor Williams, yes. Let the record show that the resolution has been approved 4-0. to zero. Okay, next will be approval of purchase from CDW-Government for the purchase of 10 laptop computers. Yes, sir. Since mid-March, the town has had several staff members that have been quarantined due to the COVID-19 concerns. And due to lack of mobile devices, staff were only able to work from home. They personally owned adequate technology to do so. Additionally, the need to conduct town business via virtual meetings has increased, and the need for portable devices that can be used away from a, fi for, from a fixed location. As a result of these circumstances, staff has concluded that additional computers are needed in order to comply with the health and safety requirements and to maintain operations in the event a large number of town personnel are required to work remotely. In response to this increased need for mobile technology, Joe LaCroix, the IT manager, has evaluated the needs per department. The request is to purchase 10 laptop computers for util utilization during remote meetings and working remotely. Attached quote, the attached quote is, from CDWG, which is through the Sourcewell Cooperative Purchasing Contract Number 081419-CDW in the amount of $19,245.60. This is not a budgeted item, but will be reimbursed through the Tennessee CARES Act. Through the Coronavirus Relief Fund, the CRF, the CARES Act provides payments to state, local, and tribal governments navigating the impact of the COVID-19 outbreak. 
recommendation is to um, approve the purchase of the CDW purchase of 10 laptops for $19,245.60. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, do we have any uh, any uh, questions or comments from anyone? I have a question. Okay. Um, it says that we'll be reimbursed through the Tennessee CARES Act, but um, how, how do we know that? Is there a confirmation that uh, all of these uh, applications are being, these purchases are being approved or do we have pre-approval? How does that work? I wish we had pre-approval, but we do not. Under the CARES Act, and I've had a couple, I actually had another webinar today. Um, one of the stipulations or, or the, I guess things we're eligible for is to provide for technology for people working remotely. And so this does qualify for that. We haven't, we, we did it at 10 mainly because that's kind of where our budget was for computers going into the next year, which that is budgeted for. The addition of these 10 is not budgeted. So our thoughts were if all of a sudden they kick this out, which I'd be very surprised if they did because that's probably very little compared to what I heard on a webinar today that like $1.2 million in computers and technology for working remotely. So we did that just in case we were not approved for this purchase, which I think we totally will be, but we did that. So if we need to cover it, we do have the money in the budget. We just wouldn't be pre replacing other computers this year that were scheduled to be replaced. Okay. Thank you, Allison. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Alderman Pinchot. I pass. Alderman Burnett. I pass. Okay, Mayor, uh, I think this is great use of the of the uh, CARES money. Uh, it's kind of a complicated uh, ordeal to go through, but uh, uh, I have faith that we will be uh, reimbursed for this uh, based on what I have learned about it. So uh, anyway, I, I think uh, we're ready now for a uh, roll call vote, please. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Alderman Pavlin. Alderman Pavlin, yes. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Let the record show that the purchase from CDW government for 10 laptops has been approved. Four to zero as requested. Next will be approval of purchase from TN Mask Supply. Yes, sir. This is very similar to the previous um, request, and this is to give you a background, it's due to the Knox County requirement, requirement that all teachers and students wear facial coverings during in-person education settings. The town of Farragut is planning to buy Farragut logo masks for all the students and teachers at the Farragut school. The purpose is to provide reusable masks that will assist the teachers and students to comply with the county's face mask requirement. The cost of the mask order will be $11,650 and the details of that are also in your packet. And due to the total cost of the mask order, this board has to approve that purchase. So the motion is to approve the purchase from Tennessee Mask, T and Mask apply for 45, 4,500 masks plus shipping in the amount of $11,650. I'm gonna move to approve. I'll second it. Okay, uh, any... Uh... Questions or discussion from the uh, uh, mayor? Has the, uh, all of anybody that's gotten these masks, tried them on, and make sure they they work, they they fit. And I say this because we just were a part of another group that ordered a ton of masks, and when they got in, they did not fit the kids' faces. They hurt their ears, and now those masks are sitting at home not being used. So that would be the only thing is just making sure that we've vetted they work on the kids and they'll fit without giving them a headache or hurting their ears. Alderman Burnett, uh, I'm wearing the adult version now. And so one of the things we wanted to make sure of is that they actually did work, at least for adults. Uh, I don't think you want to necessarily put them in the dryer when you, when you uh, do it because they do shrink a little bit, but they work really well. and. And so hopefully the, the kids version, we don't have um, 
I know they make them, but we don't have the exact size to say fit on a child yet. But they were planning on doing those for both the um, primary school and the intermediate school. And then the middle school and the high school would have the adult size math. May I, I'm gonna ask a question. Uh, 4,500 doesn't sound like um, enough to cover all of our students. Did we check with each of the principals for the on cap campus number of kids? And I assume somebody's done all that calculation. Yes, and this is for all the Farragut schools, so all four of our public schools. Uh, we checked the numbers, and those are all all the ones that are going to be in person. So you got to okay. remember, some of them are going to be at home. Uh, so we yep. wanted to make sure all the in-person students have plenty of masks. Okay, all right. Just I figured as much. I just wanted to check. That's kind of a low number, so um, I was surprised that that many um, kids are um, doing virtual learning. Okay, anyone else? None? Okay, with a motion to approve and a second, I'll need for town record. Take a roll call vote, please. Alderman Pavlin. Alderman Pavlin, yes. Alderman Burnett? Alderman Burnett, yes. Alderman Pinchock? Alderman Pinchock, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Okay, let the record show that the mask purchased from TN Mask has been approved, or does it grow as requested? And I purposely put mine in the dryer and, and uh, dried it on uh, low, low heat, and uh, it uh, did, not, uh, did not shrink up, so it worked just fine. Okay, next will be uh, approval of 2021 Blue Cross Healthy Places Grant. Mayor, we have an opportunity, uh, the Town of Fairgate, to apply for a grant from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. They have had these grants in place for several years, but they typically have maybe one to two uh, grants that they issue each year. This year, coming up in 2021, is their 75th anniversary of uh, being a company. And so this year they're going to be awarding 10 grants at $750,000 each to provide for uh, different playgrounds uh, for different areas around Tennessee. I know this will be a competitive process, but one of the goals that the Board of Mayor and Aldermen had through their capital investment program was to look at any way we could to get an all-inclusive playground. Uh, the playground that you see on your screen is called the Thrive and Play. This is a uh, fully inclusive play area. It's got a swing and a freestanding play area, a fitness station for teens and adults, and a small pavilion with picnic tables. Um, the, there's a lot of stipulations whenever you get free money, for, especially from a uh, private company. Um, they would come in and do all the work. They would provide, um, obviously, all of the, um, all the equipment. They would actually even provide funding for future uh, maintenance on that equipment, uh, which could possibly include... Uh, any of the uh, equipment being damaged or uh, the uh, surface itself. It's a poor in place surface. Typically those have to be uh, replaced in a 10 to 15 year time frame, depending on wear and tear. Um, but another stipulation is, is that obviously the, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, logos all over it for Blue Cross Healthy Place. Uh, there's some signage that would be involved as well, which does not comply with the town signage requirements. Uh, but all, all of those things would have to be, you'd have to uh, basically agree that you're okay with putting all those things in in order to get the playground. Um, <clears throat> it does uh, have uh, ADA accessible sidewalk and parking. And so the other thing that has to be provided is a pretty much a flat area for the park to be able to go in. If we, we looked all over town, staff did, at where we would have a flat area to apply and be able to put this in, and the only spot we could really come up with is the area right behind Town Hall. When Town Hall was originally built years ago, I think uh, they looked at this site uh, being maybe even a possible community center uh, for us down the road. It's been open space ever since. Uh, you can see on your screen, it would take up some area of the green space behind, but certainly not all of it. So we'd still have some green space available uh, behind uh, Town Hall. The good part about this is there's already parking available, easy access in and out. 
Uh, there's also restrooms in the town hall building. So during the, the, the day, uh, there would be available restrooms there for anyone that uses the park. Um, of course, we wouldn't be around on the weekends necessarily unless we had a special event or something going on. So if there's any other additions we want to make down the road, that's something that we would have to budget for and provide for uh, for the park. Um, it does call for a 20-year uh, agreement with Blue Cross Blue Shield with additional 10-year renewal possible. Um, there's also, if, if we do get, the town does get it approved for the grant, which we would not find out we're a finalist till the end of this year, December of 2020, <clears throat> probably not find out for sure if we receive the grant until the spring of 2021. But I do believe their goal is to try to build this park next year because they'd like to get these in place since it is their 75th anniversary. There would be a license agreement, a donation agreement, and a transfer agreement that all be included in this. And Tom Hale has reviewed all those agreements and feels like they're they're okay for us to move forward on if we need to. So at this point, um, we would just ask that you approve the 2021 Blue Cross Healthy Place grant application. That does have to be, uh, I think, turned in on Monday is the deadline for that. Uh, and then we'll wait and see what happens from there. And I'll be happy to try to answer any questions the board may have. Okay. Uh this point, uh, I guess I'll ask for a motion. I was going to leave that to Mr. Burnett to make the motion. Yes, motion to approve. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, I'll start off with questions then. Uh, do we have to go through Legacy Park on this or can we deal directly with the uh, Blue Cross group? Well, Mary, what happens is we'll we'll actually go straight through them, but okay. they require uh, that the monies that are placed in an account be in a foundation. And so we don't know exactly if, and the Blue Cross has its own foundation. Obviously, Legacy Parks has a foundation. There may be other civic organizations we, that have um, foundations that they may want to put the money with. So that's something that we would have to still discuss with them, but that money would not they go in our bank account, and it wouldn't necessarily be in Blue Cross's bank account. It would be in a foundation's bank account that we would have to go to in the future and request those funds for any maintenance that we have to do. Okay, that that was my main concern was was how we would how we would source funds for maintenance and upkeep. So uh, I guess that's still open. I guess okay. Uh, we'll go with uh, Vice Mayor Pavlin next. Um, not that it would be considered under this project, but uh, at some point I would assume that we would be interested in putting in some restroom facilities. Um, is that a possibility in that area? Yes, ma'am, I think there's plenty of room if we need to do it. There's sewer already to our building, um, obviously down running down Park Place Boulevard, there's gonna be sewer running down it. So there's plenty of opportunities to connect in where we would need to. Uh, I think we could probably do a very simple type of restroom, maybe even get away with, uh, get by with one unisex facility, because we do have the major facility there at Town Hall, uh, which would be available during open hours. We are not planning on lighting this facility, so it would really be just for daytime hours, uh, sunrise to sunset, that you'd see most of the activity there. I'm going to ask a little, uh, I guess, um, a little bit of dreaming, because eventually this area will develop around here and then this will become a pocket park for whatever development um, uh, comes into the Ford property. Are we looking to, I know this is probably not a question that needs to be asked right now, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. The parking lot back there, um, if there's an easy connection to be made to the, the road that travels parallel to it. Is that something we're looking at doing when we, um, when we start seeing development around there? We, we certainly could, if that's something that was in the board's interest, um, we could look at doing that. Obviously, we have Municipal Center Drive, which will be the main connector into that area. But depending on how the Ford property develops, you know, this, if this is uh, going to be our downtown, our future downtown uh, down the road, then having more residential areas around it, it would make it more convenient for them to get in and out of that area and be able to utilize the park easily. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, That's all I have. Okay, Alderman Pinchot. Um, that was my main concern if we were going to have another entrance, uh, so that answers that for me. And I guess just the positioning of this park on this piece of property, uh, whether it be pushed up close to the road or further on back, uh, looks like we have room to uh, make some adjustments there uh, one way or the other. Is that correct? Yes, sir. This is just showing an approximate placement. Uh, I think between if, if we're fortunate enough to get the grant, then it would just be a discussion between us and Blue Cross Blue Shield. And, and all of the elements that you saw on your screen would be included. They may be rearranged to some degree. It may, it may fit slightly different on, on the piece of property, but all those elements would be part of the part. Okay. I think it's a great opportunity. I'm excited. Okay, I've got one more question too. If we do do that, I think it would be probably behoove us to make sure that if we do not have a connector that we at least have a walking trail connection to it because of what may develop uh, on the Ford property and, and, and going forward. Okay, next is Alderman Burnett. Yeah, so yeah. obviously I'm very, very excited. You know, as as I looked, as I did the research and talked to companies that do these all-inclusive playgrounds, the numbers came back anywhere from 600000 to a million dollars to really get some high-end ones. And this being right at 750 incorporates a lot of the all-inclusive nature, but also having a pavilion and everything else. You know, we've got such an active community of special needs parents and kids. I think this will serve our town very, very well. So um, if there's anything else on top of filling out this grant we can do from a letter from the mayor, from the board, state rep, anything else that could help um, show the need and um, the activity that's in our town and that community. I mean, I, I'm all on board for taking that on and trying to rally any other support outside of just the standard submittal. Well, Alderman Burnett, I know we had three different civic organizations in town write letters of support for our grant. So hopefully, you know, we can keep that uh, keep that coming. But yeah, we're, we're excited about it. I mean, it would be a great opportunity. We just need to hopefully have a great grant application and, uh, you know, hope for the best when it comes to the grading process. That's okay. okay. One person I've not talked, uh, I've not mentioned on this would be Sue if she has any comment. Sue Stewart. She's still on. Mayor, I don't know if Sue's available tonight. She may not be on this evening. Okay. I'm I'm here just for a minute. So can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, yeah, it, the the grant application doesn't allow you to even put a letter of from the mayor or anything. It's very succinct. They they know what they want. Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, Foundation, and so it's. But we've got everything in place. It's ready to go on Monday once we got your approval. So um, thank you for doing that. I, I just want to reiterate this. This is very, very competitive. So, you know, I, I we're going to hope for the best, but it is a very competitive grant. Um, Sue, can I and I'll ask you or David or whoever best to ask when they do this design, do they work with you? Because obviously we would love, like to put in a restroom facility at some point. Do they work with you in that design? I don't know if you're even familiar with that so that we can make sure that we're leaving a room where a restroom would most uh, uh, make sense. Yeah, so so you can't change the basic design. I mean, they'll adapt it a little bit to the property. You can't change it, but they were very clear um, during the workshop that if there were communities that wanted to do, wanted to add to it, because that was the question, well, could we get this instead of this, or could we add something? You can't exchange but you can do other phases. So yes, I'm sure we would work and it's game time who is partnered with Blue Cross um, Foundation for this. They're a great playground company. So um, yeah, they would definitely help us work on the placement for whatever future things we would like to add for future facilities. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate that, Sue. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Sue. That was the reason I wanted to hear from you. Uh, 
I need to clarify uh, a little bit of a, a misunderstanding we may have had on this. So, okay, with that, uh, I thank you again for, for uh, sitting in for that. Uh, I guess uh, I'll now ask the uh, town recorder for a roll call vote, please. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock. Did we lose Ron? Uh, we might have. I don't All see right, we'll him. Come, we'll come back to him. Alderman Pavlin? Alderman Pavlin, yes. I love technology. <laughs> Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Did you hear from Pinchot? He's no. on. Yeah, there he is. He's on video. Ron, can you give us a thumbs up? You're good? Okay, okay. he's good. Actually, he's muted. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, let the record show that the 2021 Blue Cross Healthy Places grant uh, has been approved as, re as requested. Okay, next will be approval of updates to the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting public comment protocol. Uh, yes, Mayor, we spoke at a workshop earlier that uh, uh, about making some minor modifications to the Board of Mayor and Alderman public comment protocol. So I just want to read those in uh, to the record so that uh, we can get those clarified and the board can have discussion on it. Uh, the first uh, paragraph we wanted to amend by saying that the Board of Mayor and Alderman welcomes and invites Farragut residents to participate in public meetings. Also, if you go down to the body of the, uh, of the elements of the, uh, when we recognize public comments, uh, line two, we're going to amend that to say any Farragut resident interested in speaking should fill out a blue comment card stating which agenda item they would like to comment on and turn in to the town recorder or a staff member. Uh, line four, public comment shall be limited to five minutes per individual. Time for public comment may be amended at the discretion of the mayor. Time is not transferable to other speakers. And line five, uh, speakers should strive to avoid redundancy. Each speaker should have their own original viewpoint. Those are all the amended sections that we were looking at doing for the public comment protocol. And so uh, staff would recommend approval. Okay, with that, I'd ask for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, I think we've discussed it already. So if there's not any more discussion or if there's no public comment, then I will move on. With the motion a second on the floor, I'll now ask town recorder for roll call vote, please. Alderman Pinchock. Alderman Pinchock, yes. Alderman Pavlin. Alderman Pavlin, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I got the church giggle. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Burnett, yes. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, yes. Okay, let the record show that the protocol updates have been approved. Um, Four to zero as discussed. Okay, uh, I guess next will be the uh, town administrator's report. David? Yes, sir, Mayor. Um, we've been uh, having to get into our old files over the last few few days looking up some old records. And when we did that, we don't have to do it very often, um, but when we do that, we realized that we needed to update some of our uh, uh, personnel that are authorized to go and look at those uh, records at the bank. So I needed to read this into the record for, for that purpose. Um, we need to update the authorized access list for the safety deposit boxes at Regions Bank. Those authorized are Mayor Ron Williams, Pam Hall, Jennifer Hatmaker, Allison Myers, and David Smoke. And that's all I have to report tonight. Okay, that was pretty easy. Okay, thanks, David, for the report. And don't look like Mr. Hale's on the line tonight, so we will not have a uh, report from him. So next will be Citizens Forum, if there is, uh, pursuant to the governor's executive order. We ask that all citizens' comments be emailed to comments at townoffarragut.org, which must, along with their name and address, be received by 12 p.m. the day of the meeting to be included in the record of that night's meeting. They must also abide by the public forum comment protocol be read into the record. I'll now ask for the town recorder to please read any and all eligible comments or questions with a five minute time limit on each subject, please. 
Yes, sir. We have one citizen comment tonight. It's from Joanne Creek Moore. It's at 12301 Butternut Circle in Sugarwood. It says, uh, Mr. Creek Moore and I are highly against the proposed plan regarding a developer putting in new 300 apartment complex at the old Kroger site. Our current infrastructure and schools cannot handle it. We are saddened by the overde overdevelopment going on here. Please turn this down. Regards, Joanne Creekmore. Okay, that's the only one we have, okay. Uh, Mayor Williams, may I have a point of clarity uh, because this seems to be going around about the, the impact on our schools and um, every five years or so, the, the Knoxville, Knox County planning uh, updates their student yield numbers for each uh, sector of the community. And in the Southwest sector, market rate apartments um, will yield approximately, give or take, six, or st six students for the Farragut primary, six students for Farragut intermediate, seven students or so for Farragut middle school, and seven students or so for Farragut high school, for a total of about 25 students. So um, it's not, this is not going to yield a lot of students. I just wanted to make a point of clarity about that. Okay, thank you. That's uh, good information for all. Uh, I think there's that's a miss uh, uh, something a lot of people are missing there that it's not a uh, a, uh, a high amount that would be in that that area. Also, I guess to say that uh, uh, with the new school that's being built uh, for the uh, for for the sector, which will be, I think, on uh, right off Philosippi there. Um, I think that would be built prior to uh, this particular uh, project being completed. And uh, at that point, I believe what we would have is, according to what we've heard, is that the students from the uh, north side of the freeway would be actually uh, zoned for that particular uh, uh, Hardin Valley area, and uh, that would also relieve some of the uh, uh, number of students that we'd have in our Farragut schools. And uh, I think also there's other questions about expanding one of our school school buildings. So I think we have some pretty uh, bright a pretty bright future ahead on on our school system. Uh, I meant, uh, have to commend uh, uh, Susan on and and you for what you all have done uh, with the schools. I think that a lot of people don't realize that and uh, how much uh, Vice Mayor Poblin's involved and uh, and how Susan uh, sticks up for us for this part of town. So uh, uh, if anyone has any else, anything else to comment on that, please go ahead. Okay, if none, then uh, the time is approximately, uh, wow, eight o'clock and 8 p.m. and with uh, out objection August 27th 2020 Farragut Board of Mayor and Alderman me is now adjourned. Everyone have a good night and be safe. Have a